Good afternoon, everyone. Um, previously in my ISOJ life, uh, I stood here and told you about ways that uh, media organizations were using new media to uh, repurpose or, or represent uh, their archival content uh, to uh, either new audiences or audiences that uh, remember the news events uh, when they actually occurred. If you weren't here or you don't remember that, it's okay. It's been archived. You can go to isoj.org and uh, do your own little time travel to 2015. So today I want to tell you about a study that, that kind of takes that concept and runs with it, uh, looking at uh, how people remember news events, in this particular case, from their adolescent years. So... Um, a couple of things I need to explain, uh, psychological concepts that were uh, sort of tied into the framework of this study. Um, Autonoetic consciousness sounds trippy, uh, but you actually do it every day and, uh, or experience it every day and usually several times a day. It is your uniquely human ability to mentally move into the past or into the future and experience a cognitive construction of yourself. Okay, everybody think about that for a moment and just kind of digest that. Um, the second term uh, is uh, something called the reminiscence bump. Uh, we apparently, research has shown, uh, we apparently uh, have a proclivity for uh, a lot of our memories over as time goes by uh, to be tied to our uh, adolescent and young adult years. Uh, this is known as the reminiscence bump. So I basically took these two concepts and uh, kind of used those as a, a, a theory framework uh, to look at, um, you know, what do we remember about news events from our youth, from our, our adolescent years in particular. So um, for this study, I used a method called video elicitation. It works for photos, too. Uh, this is a research method where you show visual content to someone, and then you either interview them or you observe uh, them as they uh, respond to that. Um, so it's a qualitative method. In this study, um, I used a convenient sample of uh, some 18 to 23-year-olds uh, from the J School in Mizzou, uh, I uh, showed them news events that would have occurred when they were between uh, 12 and 19 for pretty much all of the subjects uh, in this study. They were uh, basically between 12 and 15. Uh, but the, uh, the two news events that were uh, selected for this study uh, were uh, uh, a highlights package of CNN's 2012 presidential cover election night coverage uh, the other, some of you folks from Austin might recognize the, uh, the uh, uh, call letters, uh, was a uh, uh, report on the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010. Um, and uh, so I had them watch these videos, and then I did a, an interview with each subject uh, concerning their memories of the news event. Um, also, memories of, of things aside from the news event, but which occurred at the same time. And then I also asked them a set of questions regarding how they think about that news event in the past now. And uh, so that's just kind of a quick summary of, uh, you know, what I was after uh, in, in terms of, of research questions for this study. And uh, so this is what... Uh, what I found, uh, kind of recurring themes throughout the uh, answers that were given in the interviews. First of all, uh, for the first question about the uh, news events themselves, memory of the news events themselves, a lot of statements regarding uh, emotional affect. Uh, with the election night coverage, I remember being so excited about the results. I remember being so disappointed about the results. Um, I, I remember the atmosphere in my uh, uh, home on election night. Uh, so a lot of, of strong ties to emotional affect. Secondly, uh, visual content, not really a big surprise there. 
uh, the you know people instantly recognized, oh yeah, I remember seeing the electoral map as the results were coming in, and you know which ones were red and which ones were blue. With the oil spill, images of oil-covered birds and other you know other endangered wildlife uh, as a result of that uh, that um, uh, rig explosion out in the Gulf. Um, also, uh, something that, that I found throughout is that these videos uh, kind of became memory aids in a way, uh, reminding them of, of details about these events that they had kind of forgotten in the passage of time. Um, things like, uh, uh, you know, the fact that there were, were workers on the, the oil rig out in the Gulf who were killed in the explosion. Several uh, subjects mentioned, yeah, I, I actually kind of forgot about that, how tragic that really was. So, secondly, I was looking at uh, things they remember ab around the same time of the news event, but maybe not directly uh, about the news event itself. Uh, many subjects remembered uh, the conversations they had with family or friends, uh, sometimes in very exact detail. Uh, a lot of uh, things at school, of course they were in school at this time, either middle school or early in high school. Um, I got a lot of, oh yeah, we participated in a mock election on uh, the uh, election day at school, or uh, several of the subjects uh, mentioned, uh, you know, discussions or sometimes even projects in the classroom uh, that, that had an environmental uh, tie to it uh, in the wake of the, of the oil rig explosion. Uh, some, in a few interviews, uh, people were able to uh, really give detailed descriptions of places, you know, rooms in the home or, uh, you know, places they were that day of the, of the news event. Something on the stratcom end. Uh, I was amazed at how often this came up. Uh, people remembering the Dawn dishwashing liquid campaign with, you know, using Dawn soap to clean the oil off the birds. Uh, a, a good number of subjects also uh, talked about uh, family and friends uh, boycotting BP gas stations for a while, uh, kind of out of reaction to what had happened out in the Gulf. Um, and then thirdly, and this might be the most important finding of all, um, people were, I found that people were using the memory of, of these news events as kind of a measuring uh, tape in, in a way of how they had changed or how their attitudes had changed, their levels of interest or concern about the news event or the, the topic that it, it was associated with. Um, and, you know, as far as tying all this into, um, you know, what we've been talking about for uh, the past couple of days, um, I'll say this. Uh, you know, if we're knocking ourselves out here in 2017, creating all this great digital content, um, how great are the tragedy if 50 years from now it's all gone or it's impossible to access? That is why digital pres preservation is a really big deal and needs to be treated as such. Um, so uh, where I'm going from here or, or where uh, other researchers might go in this line, um, this study is, is still open. Uh, what I'm doing now is uh, recruiting older subjects, uh, older generations, to see if the same kind of things occur in interviews with them about news events that occurred when they were in adolescent years. Um, also, uh, psychophysiology and neuroscience are giving us some great new ways to explore uh, processes that go on inside the mind uh, when engaging with media content, including media content from the past. Real quick plug for a conference uh, that we host uh, or sponsor uh, through the Reynolds Journalism Institute at Mizzou. Dodging the memory hole, if you're a George Orwell fan, you know exactly what that refers to. It is a conference about digital uh, content preservation, and it's very much like ISOJ in bringing together 
media professionals, researchers, uh, librarians, archivists, information specialists. So uh, rjionline.org if you want to learn more about that. And then finally, I will leave you with this note about time. The best adventures of your future are the ones you never expected to take. And I'd like to introduce you to one of mine. Her name is Amy Cruz, and she is the reference, actually, to that oddly worded title on the first uh, slide, The End of Life as I Knew It. She is also the beginning of an even greater one, because exactly four weeks from today, we are getting married. <laughs> And she's supposed to be watching this live stream right now, so if you'll excuse me just a second. Hi, Amy. Love you. Thank you for letting me have fun up here. <laughs>